welcome to this video tutorial for Asteroids. In this video we're going to take a look at the new update for Push 2. So the first thing you want to do is go to the Asteroids pack and make sure you grab the Asteroids Push 2 version. Load this up. This has been specially updated for Push 2. has a few extra features uh, that integrate into the control surface. First thing you're going to need to do is choose the control surface from the drop down menu. This should show you all the currently um, connected control surfaces. So choose push 2 and what you should see is the button matrix will disappear, means the device has taken over it. Um, the next thing then is to start playing. So hit play and you can choose your first asteroid. You can choose the direction of the first asteroid, so at the moment it's going to go up, and then if we choose the next one to go down uh, and trigger it on the same path they'll collide, triggering a sound. Let's do some left and right asteroids, okay, so for each asteroid you can change the, uh, the, the style of how it plays, so if I choose the next one to come in uh, let's do it in a spiral mode. Start right, this will go all the way around and into the center and back out. And we can choose also the speed, so the rate. So 16th notes, make it faster. You can control parameters from the device from push itself. Just hit asteroids, push two and then you can choose your different banks like rate, style, you can choose uh, the drum sequencer which we'll look at in a moment, velocity, random, chance and then the ghost machine. So the ghost machine allows us to trigger additional notes whenever two asteroids meet and it will Place the ghost note, if you like, somewhere else on the grid, but it will it will always have a, a relationship to the scale that's currently being used. So we can choose the scale over here. So I'm going to go with minor pentatonic. Okay, something else we can do, if I go back to the first page, we can choose the note range, which is the range of notes being covered across the keyboard. So the higher the range, the wider the range, the lower and higher notes you'll get. The smaller range will just give you like one or two notes. Okay, let's go back to the ghost machine. I've set the ghost mach machine to be uh, an octave below. Uh, let's just turn it on. I'm going to make the notes length longer for the ghost notes. These are the pink ones that you're seeing. I'll make the velocity lower. I'm going to randomize the velocity a little bit more as well. You can also choose a different ghost grid. This is fully explained uh, in a separate tutorial and in the manual, so please take time to look through the different grids and also the grids for the different styles and what they actually mean. When we have active asteroids running on Push 2, you'll notice that you get the scene launch button light up. These represent the active asteroids. So if I turn this one off, it will turn off the last asteroid, the one that was moving around switch these all off like so and then start again okay if you don't want to use the side buttons hitting layout will switch these to take over the top row uh, of buttons on push 2 like so you may need the top row buttons to control um, interface selections on the screen so you can switch between Seam launch buttons or the top row buttons on push. We also have static mode as well. So turning static mode on and using the select button activates whether the static mode is being edited or not. With it being edited, you can enter orange or static notes that don't move around. They still have the same relationship in that they uh, trigger a note if another asteroid passes through them. If 
you want to, you can solo the static mode. So you only hear notes when they trigger or when they go past static notes. to switch between tracks in Ableton as usual and push only takes over uh, or is taken over by Asteroids when you're on the currently selected track. So if for example I have another MIDI track, push uh, resumes its the normal behaviour. This means you can have multiple versions of Asteroids on different tracks. So here I've got another version running. Let's just bring the mix up for this. Another feature of Asteroids is the drum mode. If we switch it from keys to drums, the ghost machine no longer is active and what we have instead is a, a feature specifically for working with drum instruments and drum racks. The difference is when uh, an Asteroid meets another one on the grid, rather than generating a specific pitch that conforms to a uh, scale, the first Asteroid, for example, will always generate the same pitch, which means it will, it will always trigger a kick or snare or whatever you've got it programmed to. So you can choose which note each of the eight asteroids is triggering at the top, like so. You can control the velocity, random velocity, and the chance of each of the asteroids triggering their note when they meet another asteroid. I'm going to use this in combination with the static grid. So turning this on, and I'm just going to First of all, select push two so it takes over. And now I'm going to enter some static patterns like so. For the first drum part, I'm going to switch it to classic mode. This will run across in a classic step sequence of fashion. So I'm going to change the direction to right. And let's start that turn off static edit mode. Okay, let's put some more static cells in here. Let's change the rate of the second one. 